Rishi Sunak has said he has absolutely not lost hope of winning the general election after the Defence Secretary Grant Shapps warned Labour could be on course for a super majority. It comes following the backlash he received for leaving D-Day commemorations early last week. We can speak now to the Foreign Secretary, Lord Cameron. Uh, Lord Cameron, thank you very much for your time this morning. It's our first well, opportunity to speak to you since Rishi Sunak left the D-Day commemorations early. Can you give us your account uh, of why that happened? Yes, I mean, uh, the Prime Minister went to the event in Portsmouth, uh, which was a fabulous event the day before D-Day, uh, and met with many veterans there. Then we went across to uh, Normandy and went to the key British event um, above uh, Sword Beach with uh, the, the, the beautiful new commemorative centre that's been built um, uh, partly by this, this government. And then after that, he decided to, um, on long-standing plan, to go back to the UK uh, before the, the, the later international event, um, which, which I went to. Um, and then after that, he said, quite rightly, that he regretted not staying and thought he'd made a mistake and was very frank and honest about it. But to be fair to him, he had been to the two key British events that the British veterans were principally at and had met with many of them and had given a very good uh, account of himself. But he's, he said he wished he'd stayed, and I, I, I think we should leave it at that. Uh, we just showed the image of yourself, uh, President uh, Joe Biden, President Macron, and the German Chancellor, uh, Schultz, you were attending that event. Can you just, in, in, you know, in the idea of transparency, did you advise Rishi Sunak that he should be at the event that we're showing now? Did you have that conversation with him? Well, well first of all, the photograph of, of um, uh, President Biden and, and Macron and Schultz and myself, that wasn't an event. It was literally uh, President Macron said he wanted to have a word with me and I... Uh, went up and we had a, a, a exchange and, and then uh, he said let's have a photo of the the quad which is Britain France America and Germany and so there we were having a photograph it wasn't an event or a meeting or anything uh, as substantial as that in terms of my advice look, I, I'm, I'm part of a team um, and I support my team leader and I give advice confidentially to my team leader about all sorts of things and I, we, we act as a team and I support his decisions and I support the things that he does Trust is really important, Mr Cameron. It's something we'll come on to in just a moment. But, I mean, in, in the light of that, trust in you is also important. Uh, it's about people's credibility, isn't it? So my question was fairly simple. Did you ever at any point, did you advise him that he was making a bad decision? Well, I, I'm not getting into advice that I or my department gave. Ultimately, politics is a team enterprise. It's important to remember that. I, I joined this team because I believe in the Prime Minister and his leadership. I've seen him work at close quarters and how effective is he, he is in, in Cabinet with world leaders, in making decisions. Uh, he has my support. He gets my advice. Um, but I, I back up what he does. That's the way a team works. Understood. Uh... Do you believe the Conservatives can win this general election? Absolutely. Any outcome is possible. I mean, this is up to the British people. I remember in 2015 being told that I was behind in the polls, I didn't have a chance, it was all over, and we won that election. So I always think time in an election, talking about what the outcome's going to be or what the polls are telling us is sort of time wasted because every bit of time we spend talking about that, we're not talking about, you know, economic policies or tax policies or the dangers we face in the world and how we need to keep the country safe. Uh, we listen very carefully when government ministers like yourself speak and, and the reason I ask that question, you'll be well aware, is because of the comments of the Defence Secretary, Grant Shapps, who said, speaking to Times Radio, you want to make sure that in this next government, he's speaking to voters here, whoever forms it, there is a proper system of accountability. And anyone hearing that will realise that he is envisaging a situation in which Labour is the government and you are are in opposition. Why is he talking that way? Well, I think what he was saying is the more people that vote Conservative, the more Conservative members of Parliament will have, the more effective we'll be able to be in Parliament. And if more we have more than in three, opposition. And, and if we have more than 325 Conservative members of Parliament, we'll form the government. That's what uh, I'm saying. That's what he's saying. And it's a, it's, a, it's a truism. And when people have read into that that you're already thinking you're going to be defeated, what would you say to them? 
I would say, look, it is a cliche to say there's only one poll that counts, and that's the one on election day. But nonetheless, it's true. I mean, the, the public have got this, you know, huge opportunity to make a decision. Do you want to carry on with Rishi Sunak, who in the last two years has got inflation down from 11 percent to 2 percent? He's got the economy growing again. He's announced in this election a whole series of exciting plans on everything from national service for young people to tax free uh, basic state pension for for pensioners. I think it's been a very energetic campaign campaign, full of content, very agenda setting. Do you want that? Or do you want to take a risk with Keir Starmer, who doesn't have a plan for the future of the country and who uh, the last election was telling us that Jeremy Corbyn uh, was the greatest thing since, since sliced bread, although last night when asked about it said, well, he only said that because he thought Labour wasn't going to win. Well, he obviously wasn't telling us the truth at the last election. What's he not being straight about at this election? Let's pick up on a couple of things you mentioned there, Mr Cameron. Uh, the national service idea, has that changed? I mean, it, it, was, it was suggested as a big idea and there were a certain number of days attached to it and how it would work. That's changed. Is, is that correct? Already that has been diluted. Have it I got that right? It hasn't changed. What, what the Prime Minister set out is the basic framework, which is this is something for 18-year-olds, that there's a military option that around 5% would take, and I think that would be great for um, the future of our armed services, because, of course, it's going to give you a sort of reserve through those people's lives, and they're going to have extraordinary skills they'll build up in their civilian lives. But the key thing is there's going to be a royal commission that's going to look at all of this in detail, because it's an immensely complicated undertaking. I know from introducing National Citizen Service myself for 16-year-olds, which has been incredibly successful and continues today, uh, that these programmes are complicated, there are a lot of things to work out, and that's what the Royal Commission will do. So much of this election is about trust, and I want to quote to you words of your own that you may well remember from when you were Prime Minister. This is March of 2013. And you said, my party has a clear aspiration to reduce net migration to just tens of thousands over the coming years. And I'm just for point of reference, net migration... Uh, figure most recently is thought to be 685,000. So your comments in 2013 over the coming years compared with where we are now, why should people trust you on immigration? Well, I think there are a few things that have happened that have fundamentally changed the situation. One is, quite rightly, we've welcomed over, two, uh, over a quarter of a million Ukrainians into our homes. We've also uh, welcomed over 150,000 Hong Kong Chinese. Again, I think correctly, I think the right decision was made there. But crucially, COVID, the after effects of COVID, uh, seem to reduce our available workforce by almost a million people. And business can't suddenly change its practices so quickly. And so we've seen a, a big increase in net migration as business has brought those people in from overseas. So the crucial question, I think, at this election is who is going to come up with that combination of immigration control, but also welfare reform to get British people of working age back to work? And then, crucially, who's going to have the training programme and the education programme to make sure that people can fulfil the jobs that are being created? I dare now, say some people from, might from, say, well, Mr Cameron... Just, just let me finish this point. Okay. What you've heard from Rishi is, yes, we're going to deliver that welfare reform with back-to-work tests and all of that, and we're going to create 100,000 new apprentices, uh, as well as continuing to invest in our, uh, our education system. So I think we've got the three-sided answer of immigration, welfare and education. And I'm not hearing that from the Labour Party. I dare say some people would ask a more fundamental question, which is why the Conservative Party doesn't say what... doesn't do what they say they're going to do. I've quoted you the figures on immigration, your own words as well. And then we look at tax, and you claim to be the party uh, that wants to lower tax. As you well know, the tax burden now is higher than it has been for, what, 74 years? Yeah, but I think that two massive things happened in the last parliament, and that is COVID, which was a fundamental shock to our economy, and the Ukraine war, which spiked inflation up to 11%. And, you know, it, it, clearly this didn't just happen to Britain. This happened all over Europe, all over the world. We've been recovering from those two shocks. And I would say the real test 
for Rishi Sunak coming in as prime minister is how are you going to get the British economy back to growth and back onto an even keel after those events? And he's passed that test. We went from 11 percent inflation to 2 percent inflation. And our economy now growing faster than France, Germany, uh, Italy or America are the most recent figures. That was the key test. And I think a lot of the election campaign, um, sometimes commentators forget that, you know, COVID and Ukraine were two huge icebergs that hit uh, the British ship of state and had a massive impact on it. I just need one last question, if I may, uh, Mr Cameron. This is about Craig Williams. Uh, new name to a lot of people who is the Prime Minister's parliamentary private secretary, uh, understood to have placed a bet with Labrooks on uh, the date of the general election. What is his situation as we stand this morning? Well, his situation, having made this um, clearly very foolish decision, is that he's being investigated by the Gambling Commission, uh, and they have considerable powers um, in terms of what the consequences could be. Uh, and I think we have to let that um, investigation take place. And so I can't really comment any further on it. Are you happy with him standing as a candidate for the Conservative Party? Yes, all the nominations are in and candidates are standing, and I don't think we can change that. In fact, uh, it's very important that, that you know, we don't, we don't make um, uh, alterations after these things have been set. Um, but obviously, he will, he's going to be investigated and we'll have to face the consequences of that investigation. Uh, Foreign Secretary, thank you very much for your time this morning, Lord Cameron, thank you. And